In this video, I wanna talk about the lights that you probably already know about if you've ever worked in 3D before, and that is the traditional 3D lights, things like point lights, uh, area lights, and spotlights. All of those lights exist up here in the physical lighting tools, and you can definitely access those. One thing to point out, like I said, this environment light is in here by default. If you don't want it, if you just wanna build your scene the traditional way with area lights and spotlights and that kind of thing, all the more power to you. You can just go ahead to this little trash can here inside the environment lights category and just turn it off. We're back to our black scene, no lights in here at all, and you can add each one individually. So let me go through these. Um, so the point light is the easiest one to understand. Go ahead and turn this on. Turn on a ray tracer too. So point light is like a light bulb. It is a single um, point where light emits from. It goes out in all directions. Uh, you have two main or three main controls, four main controls. I just could be increasing that number over the light. You can change the color that is being emitted from that light. Uh, very few lights in the world are actually pure white. So having a little bit of color in your lights is very good. You can increase this exposure. Uh, you can also increase the intensity. They both essentially do the same thing. It's just different calculations of them. Uh, intensity is a straight multiplier of the light's value. So if you go at like a 200% intensity, it's two times the amount of light that's being emitted. Where exposure, it's a little bit more based on like the f-stop system where each exposure level that you go up increases the light by double or something like that. So it's, it's basically how you want to um, the different calculations of how you want to increase light, but actually both of them just kind of more, more means more light. And then you've got the light's radius as well. So you can think about this in, in again, in real world terms, a very small light will actually cast a very sharp shadow, while one that's a little bit larger will cast a very soft shadow because it's a larger light source. And you gotta watch out for going too big on this. You'll see here that this is like a radius of seven and it's now cutting in because the light source is actually bigger than the object that's in there. So just one thing to be aware of with the point light. Now, the point light is one that's commonly used by people, especially new users to 3D. I tend to stay clear of it, unless there's a physical reason why it's on there, like a uh, lamp or a uh, candle light or something along those lines. Um, and obviously, I meant to mention this too, you can position this around the scene wherever you want and it's gonna even light up there. So, um, Oh, the reason why I don't use point lights as much is because they aren't very efficient. They just spray light everywhere. So there's there's rays of light being sprayed up on all around, and um, it's it's kind of um, it's kind of inefficient. What I do like to use is a spotlight. And now I can click this, and it'll create the spotlight here at the origin. But one other way that's really nice is I can drag and drop it. Some see because the you know it's all black. But I can drag and drop it onto my object, and where I release it is going to be the focal point of that light. So a spotlight is uh, as you'd expect. Um, it is, again, same controls over color and exposure, but you also now have some controls over the outer angle of the light, and you can focus that in, as well as the, um, again, the same same uh, radius setup. So you can, um, you, can, you can dial this in a little bit as well. So I really like spotlights because it's like a point of it doesn't have that problem of spraying light everywhere. Uh, it really does just kind of uh, focus it in one place. Um, the spotlights for years were like the kind of go-to light. Because again, uh, you can um, control the uh, you can you can control the radius, you control the focal point, and you can really simulate a lot. And if you wanted to simulate the sun, you just throw it eight thousand units away from the sea. Um, and additionally, we have an area light, which is really nice. Again, same setup where I can just like drag and drop it onto the object and it, it will um, uh, it'll, it'll aim at that point. So one thing to note about the area light, again, same exposure, um, intensity sliders. Um, one thing to note about it is that the area light, instead of the point light and the spotlight, which kind of has like an arbitrary uh, size, size value, you can actually control, you can actually see how big this is. So if I, if I make this 30 units taller or 30 units or, you know, 50 units wider, it actually changes the light. So this is similar to like a light box in a photo studio. Now, the one thing to be aware of is I'm changing the numbers numerically in here. If I change the scale of this light here, it won't actually do anything. I actually have to change um, the numbers down here. I'm not crazy about that feature, but um, something just to be aware of. Uh, additionally, 
in other 3D applications, you think you can kind of toggle your view and see multiple lights or even look through the light source. That isn't available yet in Stager, but I can imagine that coming down the road. Um, and if it does, I will happily make another video and show you how to do that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So we've got area lights, uh, point lights, and spotlights. The last one I'm gonna mention is the directional light. I'm gonna show it to you and then tell you never to use it. So the directional light um, is a light that has, you know, you'll just see um, these lines that are kind of emitting from it. So there are lines that kind of uh, spit out in one direction and it's meant to simulate sunlight, all kind of like rays of light just going for infinity, starting nowhere, ending nowhere, and just going onward in one direction. Um, as you can see, there's only one control for this and that is just pure intensity. So why do you... So this is like my hot take. I had a lot of feelings about lights because again, I've done it for years. Uh, I think that directional lights should be removed from, from stage or in all 3D applications because they do not give you accurate results. Again, you could only get really hard shadows with them. You can't control the shadow quality, which is a huge part of lighting in, in, in 3D. Um, and you also, it just, people, like I, I, in again, in all my years lighting and over, you know, 10 animated movies, I never once used an area light, or I'm sorry, I never once used a directional light because you don't control and the results are realistic. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm, I don't wanna leave on a sour note, but basically I, for me, my go-tos are always spotlights and area lights and point lights on the rare occasion that you're actually gonna see something in. Uh, area lights for years were too slow to process, but as computer processing has gotten better, they are pretty awesome. Cause again, they simulate that like, nice soft lighting. Um, so that's it for those. Um, I will jump into these next round in our next video here, these environmental stages.